All right, uh, my name is Bill Arndt. I'm a nurse consultant in the Data Science Engagement Group. This talk is about using workflows at NERSC. So by the end of the 20 minutes, I'm hoping that everyone here will understand what we mean when we use the word workflows and workflow management. Uh, if the problems that you work on count as workflows as far as these tools and resources are concerned and can help with. Uh, you'll understand all of the resources that NERSC provides both in uh, infrastructure and consulting and support to help workflows. And I'm going to show off uh, a handful of examples of using these kinds of tools. So the big question, and there's been a lot of uncertainty, is what's the definition of workflows? What do we mean when we say this? Because lots of people use the word workflows, and they're talking about kind of different things. For us, a workflow is a problem that is best solved by inserting automation between user action and the interfaces that come into our systems, our computation and storage. Uh, so to be a little more specific in the categories there, the interfaces are things like Slurm commands, using a bash shell on a login node, uh, HPSS and uh, HSI, and those commands that go to the tape archive, uh, Globus for data transfer, and the interface for using data work. Hello, Kat. Uh, the resources that we're talking about are the actual compute and storage components. So these are the compute nodes that have been scheduled by Slurm, uh, our storage space, our network bandwidth and data transfer capabilities, and even our identity management systems. Uh, workflow management tools are the specific noun that talks about software systems that do that kind of automation. So, General examples to try and clarify what things count as workflows for the talking about these tools. Uh, if you need to run your application thousands of times, you may have thousands, hundreds, tens of thousands of individual data sets. You may be doing something like a very large Monte Carlo simulation where everything's a little independent simulation or sampling. And in the end, you want to combine them all together to do a statistical analysis. Uh, it would be very tedious to do sbatch a thousand times. That's why you want a workflow management tool. So you say, give me a thousand instances of this with these parameters and it does the rest for you. Uh, your data processing happens in several stages. Maybe you've compiled multiple applications that act in a chain where the output from one is the input for the next and it proceeds in a line all the way through your processing. Uh, it would be tedious to do each of those in its own job and type SBAT yourself, but many of these workflow management tools can take a description of that chain and run all of the applications for you from beginning to end. Uh, maybe your application has a small chance of crashing or having some sort of failure and it needs rerun. Uh, it wouldn't be great if a human needed to be sitting there watching it, looking for crashes, and then manually restarting the ones that need restarted. So some of these tools have the ability to detect an exit code that's not zero and autom automatically rerun the task. Uh, maybe your application, you want to run it every month or every two months or some regular period. Uh, you want to reprocess new data that's come in during the month or there's uh, some other accumulation or change over time. Uh, you don't want to put an event on your calendar every month to go into Cori and rerun this particular job. Uh, why not set up a system to do that for you? So those are the problems that we're looking at. What kind of resources are we providing to help with those? Uh, so as far as support, there is specialized infrastructure. Well, he mentioned some of it already. Uh, we provide some software tools that can do this stuff. And we've got some specialized support 
uh, going towards these particular problems. Uh, there is a workflows working group at NERSC. Uh, it's been operating since September 2019. Uh, there's three members, Lori Steffi, Bjorn Anders, and myself. Uh, we, in that time, have been thoroughly evaluating many workflow management tools. Uh, the total space is more than 300 tools, so this is a pretty involved task, but it's also very important for us to do because when users come to us and say, this is my problem, what should I be doing to fix it? We want to be able to narrow down those 300 choices to two choices or three choices and save a lot of that uh, mental overload of having too many things and not being able to find the right one. Uh, a big part of this is we are refreshing and improving the documentation and advice on the nurse documentation site regarding workflows. So if you go, if you navigate to running jobs and then you'll see a section on workflow tools, uh, that is where our work is being placed as we create it. So each time we finish evaluating a new tool, we'll put up a blurb about it, what it's good for, what it's not good for, and how to get started using it. There's also a big outreach component here. Uh, me speaking with you today, providing information about using workflows at NERSC. Uh, we talk to users about what they're doing. We talk to experimental facilities about what their, their pipelines and facilities and researchers need. We talk to tool developers that make workflow tools. And we also talk to other major computational facilities to try and share best practices about how to support workflow tools. So the documentation and guidance, uh, here's the URL to that. Uh, if someone could maybe take that link and put it in the living document off to the side, that'd be great. Uh, again, it's a work in progress. We are expanding and refining as we find new tools. Sometimes we'll evaluate a new tool that is much better than everything before it, and we'll have to uh, adjust everything accordingly. Uh, it's got the details, there's uh, very clear examples and suggestions as far as if your work looks like this, then start by trying tool X or Y. Uh, we also want to get tickets about workflow management tools. That's uh, a main source of information uh, about how we learn what users need. And that's a main way that we can share our experience that we've gained about workflow management tools with users that are, say, starting a brand new project, they haven't implemented anything yet. Of course you want to start by working with a, a tool that you know works at NERSC and you know works well. Uh, infrastructure resources. Well, he had mentioned the Cori workflow nodes. Uh, there are two login nodes, but they're not in the uh, load balancer when people SSH in that are reserved specifically for things like workflow management tools. Uh, the environment is the same as login nodes, uh, but the access is only limited to people that have been approved and heavy compute is not allowed, only lightweight management processes. Uh, so this is a good place to put cron tabs, for instance. Uh, if and if you have the use case where you run and run something once a month, then you would want to submit a ticket to ask for access to the query workflow nodes, explain that you want to run your workflow once a month, and then you'll SSH into the workflow or into the workflow node and put your cron tab. Uh, there's a caveat that the uptime for these nodes is the same as the query login nodes. So they're also subject to query maintenances or unexpected downtimes. So you can't put a, a tool running on one of these and expect it to stay there indefinitely. You may need to go in and check it and restart it after maintenances or after a downtime. Yep. And the way to gain access is to submit a request to help.nurse.gov asking for workflow node access. Uh, you'll need to describe what you expect to do, and you'll need to uh, describe the computational resources it's going to need on that node. 
Uh, you're also going to want to have a list ready to go of the users who will set it up and access it for maintenance and so forth. And those would be the users that will get the ability to SSH into those nodes. Okay, best practices. Uh, so the first example, uh, GNU Parallel is better than using the Query Shared QoS. Uh, with the, the one exception, if you only have one job, if you have one job that needs a few cores, then go ahead and use the Shared QoS. But most people that are using the Shared QoS have a lot of jobs. It is hundreds of jobs or thousands of jobs. And what ends up happening when you use the shared QoS is each of those jobs is being held by the two jobs gaining priority at a time. So the actual throughput of all of them is pretty low if you have a lot of them. But if you use GNU Parallel to pack lots of shared jobs into a single job submission that uses maybe one entire node or maybe multiple nodes, there's also recipes to do that, then you'll only wait in the queue once. Uh, reduce total queue wait time. Uh, yeah. So another thing that's a big benefit to packing lots of small jobs into single wider jobs with more nodes is it's much less burden on the Slurm controller. Uh, the Slurm controller controls resource allocation for everything on Quarry nurse wide. So if somebody submits too many S runs in a loop, like we saw an example of earlier, or a hundred thousand, well, that's too many, 5,000 jobs at a time, uh, all of those commands go to the Slurm controller and can cause it to uh, pause for every user while it's dealing with all those requests. That's something we want to avoid. And a good way to do that is to turn 5,000 requests into one request for 5,000 nodes. Uh, another advantage in parallel is that it can take care of running combinations of smaller tasks on a node, both in parallel and sequence. So you can tell it, I want to run two jobs at a time with this J flag. But if you give it 10 jobs total, five jobs total, what it's going to do is it's going to run two at a time. And then when those are done, it'll run the next two and then whatever's left. So this makes it very straightforward to pack lots of single core jobs or single core tasks into one full node job. Uh, input substitution is very easy. This, uh, these two parentheses here, this is where it substitutes what the input file went in for it. Uh, but besides just the very simple substitution, there are many, many more options for, say, doing combinations of multiple files and that sort of thing. If you need power, it's available, but it's not there out of the gate. Uh, also, GNU Parallel tends to be much better than task arrays. And the reason for that is that the two jobs per user priority gain limit also counts for tasks in a task array. So if you submit a very large task array, two tasks are going to move through the queue at a time. But if you turn a very large task array into a single job on multiple nodes using GNU Parallel, then you're only going to wait in the queue once. Uh, I don't have time to go through a lot of the detail here, but go to that documentation that I listed earlier, and there's examples and instructions for using GNU Parallel to pack work. Uh, okay, first buffer. And uh, we that's also been mentioned earlier. I think there might be some later as well. Uh, the burst buffer is very, very good at IO operations capacity. And that is one of the things that Luster is not great at. Uh, Quarry Scratch is designed to deliver very, very large amounts of bandwidth to one very large MPI job, but lots of computing or throughput computing is many, many individual tasks, each doing their own thing. And that drives a lot of file system metadata, which the two Luster metadata controllers are not great at. 
If you use the burst buffer, then effectively you can have access to hundreds of metadata servers and that can give you much better performance. Yeah. So uh, you'll want to see the Cori burst buffer documentation and other components of the training uh, for information about using the burst buffer. Okay. Now, data-centric workflow management tools. This, these kinds of tools are for the, the problems where you have multiple applications with input and output requirements, and some of the outputs feed into inputs for others, and it's all together in a network of dependencies. And maybe you also have things like, if this job fails, I want to rerun it. Uh, complex control structures like that. Then you want a data-centric workflow management tool. Uh, most of the tools available handle this kind of work. Uh, two examples I'll call out are SnakeMake and Parcel. Uh, you can find detailed instructions about how to use those on the workflow management tool documentation. Uh, there's things that you need to worry about if you're going to use a tool like this at NURSE. You don't just uh, pick it up blindly and start running it. Um, a lot of these tools expect sort of a, a cloud level of availability of resources. Uh, they don't expect to wait in the queue for a number of days and that can lead to much lower performance. Like they're not very good at navigating policy and QoS structures like we have. They expect to be able to get resources immediately. Um, another tendency of these kinds of tools is they're not good at packing jobs. Uh, every task that you give it will be translated to a single Slurm job and you'll end up waiting in your two jobs per user in the line. Uh, so it'll take a long time for the entire workflow to move through. Uh, another problem is some of these tools have naive Slurm integration that does a lot of SQ commands to see what's the state of their jobs in the queue. And if it does it too many too fast, then that will also slow down the Slurm controller for everyone using Cori. Uh, there's also some risks as far as using these tools with network file systems. They expect certain file system features to be available that aren't available in all of our file systems, like uh, there's some locks and there's also some synchronization things that they may expect to be faster than actually happen. Uh, so that's something to look out for. Right. Oh, good timing. All right. Um, so hopefully you have a good sense now of what we mean when we're talking about workflow management tools and what we can do to help you if your problem looks like it needs a workflow management tool. Uh, please contact me or one of the other members of the Workflow Tools Working Group if you want help or suggestions or you're planning on setting up a system like this. Uh, one thing I'm particularly interested in is looking at ways to combine multiple VASP jobs into a single job because that seems to be a common use case of lots of people putting in lots of individual VASP jobs and their whole run is like a, a hundred different uh, crystal structures or something like that. And I'd like to find a way, work with someone to find a way to pack those into fewer job submissions for less queue waiting time. Right, uh, so I'm done. I yield to the next presenter.